has been a month since vaccination has started all over the world and more recently in India. Two vaccines, namely Covaxin and Covishield, have been approved for emergency use in India. While the vaccinations are already taking place at a fair pace in many states, there are many unanswered questions around their efficacy, side effects, the new variants and more. In this video, Dr. Sumaya Sheikh and Dr. Aviral Watts will answer some burning vaccine-related questions. Dr. Sumaya Sheikh is the Altu Science Founding Editor and Dr. Aviral Watts is MD-PhD from Scotland and works with NHS Scotland as a clinician and is on the front line of fighting COVID. So the technology behind all these three types of vaccines are, first of all, talking about Covishield, which is the Oxford uh, AstraZeneca vaccine. It is based on a virus, which is an adenovirus, we call it. We, we can get away with the name. That's OK. But that virus causes uh, flu-like symptoms, cold-like symptoms in chimpanzees. So that virus has been taken. It has been uh, weakened uh, so that it does not multiply in human beings. And into that virus... Um, the gene of the protein, which uh, the, the gene which codes for the proteins of coronavirus has been inserted. And then this virus is, is then put into to, um, human beings. And then the protein, the spike protein is, uh, is generated. And as a result of that, our immunity uh, senses that as a foreign material and develops its immunity against that protein. And then when the, the real virus attacks, that protein is identified by our immunity and that the, and the, the virus gets attacked and we are saved. So that is, that is uh, the basis for Oxford uh, AstraZeneca. Now for the Covaxin, the one which is made by Bharat Biotech, um, in that one, they have taken the real coronavirus itself. And they have inactivated it. Now, this is, a, this is a traditional way of doing the vaccines. So they have inactivated it so that it does not multiply in the system. But it has the whole shell. So it has the whole uh, virus as it is. And then our immunity sees it as a foreign body. Again, the same process happens, develops immunity against it. And when the real virus comes in, it, our body fights against it. Now, the mRNA vaccines, these are the new kids on the block. So these are, uh, these are the latest technologies. Uh, what it entails is that now, mRNA is a very, very small code of that specific protein, which is, again, the part of the spike protein we are talking about uh, regarding to the virus. Now, that mRNA is then put into a small nanoparticle, which is a, which is a fat-soluble particle, which can go into the cells very easily. And once inside, our cell machinery then makes proteins based on that particular mRNA code. And, and then once those proteins are made, our immunity kicks in against those proteins, which are similar to the coronavirus proteins. And then again, our immunity is ready to attack when the real coronavirus comes in. I just wanted to add another thing is that people uh, find that sometimes you can get a little sick after getting the vaccine. The, uh, the, the symptoms that are supposed to, um, that you're supposed to get after getting the vaccine, they're, they're similar, but they're not going to be the same as getting the COVID-19. So regardless of what uh, vaccine you take, uh, the symptoms are always going to be a lot more, um, let's say, shorter, um, uh, really benign, and you know it will only last for a couple of days, and uh, you'll get over it. It's still better to get the vaccine than to actually get the COVID-19. Um, so, it, but it will still have some of the similar um, uh, symptoms as you would have um, uh, with the coronavirus um, disease itself. Uh, so it's probably only in India that scientists and health workers, uh, particularly the frontliners, are actually very skeptic about these vaccines because unlike uh, the mode RNA and Pfizer and uh, AstraZeneca, um, the, both of these vaccines haven't been tested in the same way as um, the vaccines that we were finding overseas. Now, a co-vaccine in particular is the Bharat Biotech's vaccine, which is um, only recently started doing the phase three trials and they had the emergency approval. Um, however, those phase three trials have not been published. Neither of the trials have been published, even the preclinical trials, um, uh, one in monkeys and the other ones in three types of rodents are not published, even though they were um, finished um, much towards the end of the summer in August, I think. Um, so they had plenty of time to publish those uh, publish those papers and they haven't been published yet so the peer review has not been done and people argue that uh, these these things have been uh, um, approved by a lot of experts so in a way it is peer review uh, well uh, you know to gain the trust of the larger scientific community not just in India but outside of India it is very imperative that these 
publications are peer reviewed and published as per the norm. Um, uh, but uh, in case of Covid Shield, because it's a transfer te uh, transfer technology from um, the Oxford and AstraZeneca, you kind of just need to show that the process or um, uh, the the vaccine is somewhat similar in the way it's behaving in in um, in in humans in India. Uh, so whatever the uh, the Serum Institute of India has made is very similar or exactly the same as the Oxford and AstraZeneca vaccine. Now, even with those ones, uh, they haven't published the details um, of uh, the equivalent studies of AstraZeneca versus the COVID shield. Now, they were not go going to do in the in the way of um, three to one ratio, where they were going to give um, say about a hundred uh, um, uh, a hundred uh, Oxford vaccines and and three hundred um, uh, COVID shield vaccines, um, just to make a comparison. But even that has been hasn't been done. So there is a lot of skepticism. They all we need to know is whether this is exactly the same as the Oxford vaccine. That's all. Uh, people need to know and learn uh, in a, in order to accept the COVID shield as the same as the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. So all of these things and the way that it's been pushed forward without trials, um, you know, and, and and some of the lies that have been woven around uh, how safe it is and how effective it is, even though that we have absolutely zero efficacy data on the COVID um, co vaccine in particular, uh, it is very uh, very troubling, uh, not just for the scientists in India, uh, but also for the health workers who are actually the first in line to receive this. So the, the major thing that has changed was that there has been massive uh, international collaboration behind this, all the vaccines. There has been a lot of funding pushed behind it. And most importantly, the red tapeism had been removed. So whatever the steps which paperwork and other uh, analysis times uh, used to take, that had been cut short dramatic, drastically. So that's what the, the speed of, of vaccine approval has been coming from. Um, for all the, the Moderna vaccine, the Oxford and the Pfizer vaccine. So these vaccines, they have gone through all the physical, uh, all the phase trials. So there hasn't been any corners cut on that front. Um, but uh, when we come down to co-vaccine, the, the bio, Bharat Biotech vaccine, the phase three trials, uh, the data is not yet, the trial is not finished, the data is not out yet, the phase one and phase two has not been published. So what that means in, in real terms is we actually don't know for sure what is the efficacy of that vaccine. It can be 0%, it can be 100%, it can be somewhere in, in, in the middle. So we don't know. If there are any serious side effects, uh, we don't know about that. There have been a couple of deaths who, in the volunteers who have taken co-vaccine, but they have not not been thoroughly investigated yet, so we don't know uh, if they can they are attributed to vaccine or not. Um, so these are the questions which 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 I think have not been properly answered, and that is where the corners have been cut. Now the reasons behind cutting these corners are also very unclear to me um, as to why that has been done. So it is difficult to comment on it. Now how dangerous is it? Uh, again, it is totally unpredictable. The danger lying uh, the danger being that this vaccine, the the co-vaccine, has be, is being given to healthcare workers, the front line, the key workers in India. Now, that is very, very dangerous because if we don't know the efficacy, we don't know this, uh, the, the side effect profile in, in completion, uh, we don't know what we are pushing these uh, frontline workers into. So that is, the, that is a big danger. The corners have been cut in India, but outside of India, all of these things, all of these three vaccines have had published phase three trials. Now, uh, one of the vaccines, which is the Oxford and AstraZeneca, has a reduced efficacy as compared to the uh, mode RNA and, uh, and the Pfizer one, which is about 94 or 95%, but Os Oxford AstraZeneca is about 70%. And they are, they are saying that you can uh, modulate the dosage um, uh, of the second dose, basically, and, and uh, increase it to about 90% or so. We, we, we don't know that yet, but in, in India, um, none of these safety, um, none of these efficacy studies have done. They are uh, alleging that from the previous research that they found, uh, not just in monkeys, but also in rodents, they have seen some sort of uh, the same um, immunogenicity um, uh, reactions as you would expect. But we've just seen the Chinese data. I think it's only come like a day or two ago, and it has only 50% vaccine efficacy. So if you're giving this to people who are at the front line thinking that this is going to protect them, and if the efficacy is only 50 percent or less, um, we are actually putting their lives, lives at risk. Uh, well, the emergency use, absolutely, yes, but uh, giving the vaccines without phase three trial, trial data has 
being released? Absolutely no. Um, mm. Actually, there's a very good way to test efficacy of vaccines when there's a pandemic going on because you have so many people infected. So to test efficacy, you don't have to give it to a lot of people or actually focus only on those areas that has um, a high level of, um, of uh, the disease or the infection. So these COVID hotspots that we call them, if we give them the, if we give the vaccines in those particular areas, first, then it's very likely that we get the vaccine efficacy data a lot faster uh, than others. So there's so many things that you could do if, if only you consult people uh, who understand how these things work. Um, so, uh, but, uh, but the emergency, I mean, a lot of people have had fastened the process as, as Dr. Vatsa pointed out earlier, uh, but no corners were cut for um, um, for the, the research itself, the corners were cut only for the bureaucratic processes. That's why we squeezed down the vaccine process to this short. Um, but, uh, but in administering them, you know, just uh, rolling out in for the entire country without, uh, you know, how to test for efficacy versus, you know, what we're going to do around it. Uh, I don't think it's a good policy um, in the way that it's being rolled out. Because the, the, the approval authority in India is banking on the fact that it has high immunogenicity and the safety has been seen in phase one and phase two trials. So we don't need to probably do that again. But I would like to uh, really stress upon the fact that phase three has a reason. Phase three of the clinical trial has a reason, has a role. And that role is to determine the efficacy and the serious side effects. So unless we have the data, there is no way we should be rolling it out under no circumstances. So there is no justification which can, which can uh, justify the role out and especially to the key health workers to anyone but you know definitely not to the frontline warriors so they were planning to give this to 22,000 to 25,000 people uh, for mm -hmm. the phase 3 trial and uh, generally all the side effects that arrive for uh, after the vaccine administration is about 30 to 45 days after the vaccine's been given and to not wait until that period i mean we know that the wait hasn't, you know, we, we, we haven't waited. We, we don't know the results of those 22,000 people. So yep. this is just a preliminary data. Uh, even if they've given it to 22,000 people, we, we don't know uh, until they give the second, uh, second um, oh. dose, which is uh, say 28 days apart. So yep. after that, you need to wait for 30 to 45 days. So unless yep. and until you, they could have easily waited for three to four weeks and um, given the real data to people and not have this, this uh, big uh, skepticism around the vaccine. So Indeed. I think it's a very bad um, a policy to release it prematurely in this way. So uh, the new strains and the new variants, the first thing we need to uh, understand is the more the virus transmits, the more chance it gets to, uh, to, to mutate, to change itself and adapt. So because it's still spreading in so many countries, there is very high likelihood that we'll see more and more new strains. The thing which has come up now is that a lot of it is being sequenced. So uh, sequencing has gone up. So which means that we are catching these new strains because otherwise up to like one, two, uh, around two strains per month were coming since the beginning of the pandemic anyway. But now we are even catching more. So the new strains of concern have been the one which, which, which was thought to be thought to have started in Kent here in UK, the one in uh, South Africa, the one, there are a couple actually coming from Brazil and then the one in, in, in Japan. There are two things to worry about the new strains. One is that it, they, they spread very fast or they are more um, uh, mortal. They are causing more mortality, more deaths or severe disease. Now, as far as the UK strain is concerned, uh, it is still the, the, the evidence-based data is still awaited about its transmissibility, although it is still widely believed that it's 50 to 70% more transmissible. It does not cause more severe disease. It does not cause more severe death. This has been shown by a data which was released by uh, Public Health England, uh, done on, I think, around 1,700 odd patients of both the strains. So uh, this has also been seen previously uh, back, in, uh, back in summer in Spain that a new strain had taken over the, whole, the, the spread in the entire country and they believed that it was uh, being more spread. But later on, the research showed that it wasn't that it was more transmissible or more dangerous. It just had a better chance at spreading or people were more uh, getting together. So that is generally the, the main reason that people have become lax in taking precautions which causes these strains to spread. We haven't seen yet a clear data which says that any strain is more uh, dangerous, although there are concerns about the Brazilian strain and probably the, the, the Japanese one too. It, it hasn't made life easy for anyone to decide when we don't have phase three, uh, phase three uh, data for the co-vaccine. The 
Covishield, I'm still uh, I'm not that skeptical about it because it has been, you know, the same vaccine has been shown around the world that it has worked. So I would be comfortable taking that. But to take the, the co-vaccine uh, in my arm without seeing any efficacy data, without uh, ma making sure that there isn't serious side effects, uh, I would be skeptical about it to put it in my arm, let's put it, or, or to put it in my patient's arms. Um, um, now, I can say that sitting here because you know that my approval, the, the approving body here in UK has approved it. So I can I can stick with the ones which which are available here. But for India, for doctors and healthcare workers and even people for India, it's a very difficult choice to make. And what I read today was that they don't get a choice even to choose which vaccine they are getting. So in that case, um, it's, it's a very tough decision. And again, I have severe reservation on taking a vaccine which doesn't have efficacy data. Now, the point I'm coming from is uh, I cannot make a decision for patients, for volunteers, for people. That is how I am trained to. I can only offer what the pros and cons are. And then at the end of the day, uh, it, it will be their decision. So my, for me, it is a no. Right. Um, I would be okay, again, uh, taking the COVID shield uh, as long as they show some sort of a uh, similarity between uh, the two, uh, the, the Oxford AstraZeneca versus uh, the indigenous made COVID shield, uh, which they haven't uh, been able to show so far. I'm hoping it's the same. Um, as for Covaxin, yeah, we probably need to wait for uh, the phase three data as well, just to see how, eff uh, how effective they are. For me, I think the safety point is not so much of a concern. I, I do think that, uh, uh, you know, there would be some similar sort of, uh, you know, we, we do take a lot of other vaccines um, in general, and they do have, you know, quite a few immune, immune responses. I recently took um, uh, one of my second shots of MMR vaccine, so I, I know how they go. But uh, having said that, as a scientist, we've done a lot of stuff on our, ourselves before, yeah. you know, before going uh, for ethics approval, just to try stuff out in the lab. So I would be okay. But uh, everyone's not me, everyone's not you. And uh, a lot of people might not be okay, specifically people who have reservations over um, uh, you know, their immune system and things like that. So, so it's yeah. definitely not okay for everyone to take it. Uh, personally, maybe I would take it, but I would not consider it effective. Um, so that is the other concern. If it has say 50% efficacy or 70%, um, it might not protect me. So I would still continue protecting myself in the same way, even after taking yes. the vaccine. So that's the other concern. I would not change how people wear masks, how people go out, travel, meet, um, not really change nothing at all. Just have the same, I mean, this is going to change our lives forever. Um, mm. We can be somewhat uh, sure that we might be protected, but if uh, realistically the chances of uh, protecting is only 70%, which is what Covishield might give or Covaxin, we don't even know the data. Um, I would be not going out to say movie theaters or biggish parties, but at the same time, um, mode RNA and um, Pfizer has given 94 to 95% data. So that is pretty good. Uh, but we don't know how the vaccine, uh, how the virus is going to mutate and have these new strains and uh, what if that escapes the antibodies. So uh, we'll try to, at least for now, just for a couple more months to see how it's going, try to uh, limit our physical contact um, to, and keep going in the same way that we're going for now, unless the rest of the population is, that, is vaccinated and then we kind of stop seeing uh, the cases um, or, or we see the drop in cases. So no, still wear the masks because you might get uh, infected even after getting the vaccine. There's a small chance um, and it reduces the more people get vaccinated, but there's still a small chance. And um, precautions, uh, I mean, the usual precautions, don't get kids vaccinated, don't get um, pregnant women vaccinated, make sure you know about your condition before you go and get the vaccine. Um, uh, as, far, as far as those immune sensitive or, or people low on immunity, I think you can take certain vaccines, but not the others. Before you take a vaccine, make sure that you are not the one who has severe allergies. To, uh, if, if you have severe allergies and you're carrying an EpiPen, uh, what we do uh, here in UK, in Europe, or, or, or quite a lot in India too now, if you carry an EpiPen, uh, you carry that with you to the vaccine uh, station because if you get a severe allergic reaction, that can, that can save your lives. That is the that is one thing which you need to be very careful about. If you have minor allergies, that is okay. That has not been shown to be uh, of any danger. Um, and again, regarding once you have your first uh, shot of the vaccine, don't think that you are protected. You, your protection starts 12 days after the second shot of any vaccine.
even if you are vaccinated, there is a chance that you might transmit the disease without getting symptoms to others. So you might not get sick, you might not get the virus yourself, but you might be carrying it around and giving it to others. So masks and distance and all that needs to carry on till, till we get a very clear, um, unambiguous, uh, you know, clearance from the scientific world, from the medical world that, okay, now we are good to go and we can get rid of them. Till then, I would strongly, strongly suggest, recommend, request, whatever you call it, that we continue with that. 